Hello and welcome to Principles of Macroeconomics. This is Module 3.3, and here we're going to be bringing everything we've learned about aggregate demand and aggregate supply together to talk about the ADAS model in equilibrium. So when we bring together all of our curves, as you can see here, our downward sloping aggregate demand, upward sloping short run aggregate supply, and our vertical long run aggregate supply, the point where all three of our curves meet is what we call our long run equilibrium. This is giving us the long run equilibrium in our economy, the equilibrium price level, and the natural rate of output. So in this module, we want to understand what happens when we have changes in this macroeconomic equilibrium to help us explain both long run economic growth as well as short run economic fluctuations. Now remember, short run economic fluctuations are also what we consider business cycles. And there are a few things that are true when we think about economic fluctuations. The first is that, as you can see here, economic fluctuations are irregular and unpredictable. These orange lines here that you see are the recessionary periods in the United States. What you observe is that the distance between the times that we have recessions varies drastically, as well as the duration of the recession. Some are short, some are long, some are more severe than others. So economic fluctuations are irregular and unpredictable. Also, most of our economic variables fluctuate together. Here you can see investment spending in the United States during our recessionary periods and over the course from 1965 to about 2015 here. And what we observe is that during those recessionary periods, not only does output fall, as we observed here, but also investment spending is falling. So our variables that are part of our output equation, consumption, investment spending, uh, government spending, and net exports, do tend to fluctuate together when we have economic fluctuations. And lastly, as output falls, unemployment rises. Here you can see the unemployment rate, and again, those periods of recessions. As we have recessionary periods, you see a huge increase in the unemployment rates. So when we are producing less and the economy is slowing down, this corresponds to higher levels of unemployment. So let's think about economic growth in the long run. So there are two factors that we can observe about the economy in the long run. The first is that we tend to have technological advancements, and these tend to be continuous and consistent throughout time. So we know that as technology advances, we don't tend to regress back on that technology. We continue to improve the technology that we have. Therefore, with improvements in technology, that makes our resources and factors of production more productive and more efficient. So therefore, what we observe is that since we continually have technological advancements, we can observe that over time, the long run aggreg aggregate supply curve is going to shift out. So what we see is that with the shift out of the long run aggregate supply, we also have increases in the natural rate of output. Okay. Secondly, we see that money supply increases over time. Now we haven't explained the link between money supply and aggregate demand yet, but we will in module four. For now, what we know is that with changes in the money supply, this is going to cause changes in investment spending in a way that will cause the aggregate demand curve to increase. So what we observe is that with increases in money supply over time, this is going to also cause a shift out of the aggregate demand curve. As aggregate demand shifts out, we're going to see that bringing together the shifts in the aggregate demand with shifts in the long run aggregate supply are going to show us new long run equilibriums so that we're moving from a point such as point A to B to C over time. So there are two things that we observe. We observe rising prices over time, as well as economic growth. We're producing more. So we have growth in real GDP, as well as inflation, when we think about the economy in the long run. Now, let's test our understanding with short run economic fluctuations. Let's look at this example. And here, once again, testing your understanding, you can pause the video if you want, try to take a crack at this example yourself, and then come back for the explanation. 
So here, let's assume that we have a situation where people become more concerned about saving for retirement as companies eliminate their pension plans and other firm-sponsored retirement support. We want to draw our aggregate demand and aggregate supply graph. We want to explain how this would affect aggregate demand or aggregate supply. We want to illustrate these changes and analyze what happens in the short run versus the long run. So let's get started. Okay, so here we are with our long run equilibrium. We'll call this point E for equilibrium. So first we wanna know which curve is shifting and why. Well, we know that this is gonna cause a shift in the aggregate demand curve because changes in the amount that people have to save for retirement is going to affect how much they can consume today. So because they have to save more today for the future, that means that they have less money to spend on consumption. So an increase in savings is going to correspond to a decrease in consumption spending. So what we observe is that our aggregate demand curve is going to shift in, all else equal. So it shifts in or to the left, we have a decline in consumption and therefore a decline in aggregate demand. We illustrate this change and we see that we move from a new equilibrium or from our old equilibrium such as point E to a new equilibrium such as point B. We see that this has caused a decrease in the price level and a decrease in output. So this new equilibrium in the short run, point B, shows that we have a lower price level and lower output, and we have a new short run equilibrium. Now, what happens in the long run? Well, as I was mentioning before in module 3.2, one of the factors that would cause a shift in the short run aggregate supply is when there are differences between expected price levels and actual price levels. So, as we see here in our new short run equilibrium at point B, this PB is going to be the actual price level and P star is the expected price level. So because we move to point B, we have this movement along the short run aggregate supply curve, illustrating that adjustment in quantity supplied when we have sticky wages and sticky prices. But over time, what happens is that firms adjust their expectations to the new reality. Firms start to observe and expect the price level to now be lower at PB than it was at P star. Therefore, over time, we don't have the sticky wages and sticky prices. Wages can adjust and prices can adjust instead of adjusting the quantity supplied. And firms will therefore, over time, adjust the short run aggregate supply curve so that we return back to the long run equilibrium. So through the adjustment of expectations to the new reality, we see a shift of the short run aggregate supply and we move to a point such as point C that returns us back to a new long run equilibrium. All right, let's do one more example. Now, here let's consider a drop in oil prices from over $100 a barrel in 2014 to about $40 by the end of 2015. What kind of impact does this have on the aggregate economy? Again, we wanna draw out the ADAS model, illustrate our changes, and analyze the new equilibrium. So, which curve is going to be affected and why? Well, we know we're going to be shifting the short run aggregate supply curve because the price of oil Oil is an input in production, so when the price of oil changes, the cost of production changes. When the price of oil falls, that tells us that production becomes cheaper. So which direction will our curve shift and why? The short and aggregate supply curve is going to shift out. At each price point, we can produce more, or the firms in our economy can produce more, because the cost of production is now lower. So we see a shift out of the short run aggregate supply, we assume that it's only the short run aggregate supply because it's a temporary change. We don't assume that this is going to be a permanently lower oil price of oil. We know that oil prices are quite volatile and there's really, it doesn't necessarily stay at one particular point for a long period of time. So therefore, we see the shift out of the short run aggregate supply. We move from our long run equilibrium, such as point E, to this new equilibrium point, point C. 
So we see that with lower oil prices, the price level in our economy falls and the amount of goods and services that are produced or real GDP increases. So with the new equilibrium at point C, the price level is lower, our output is higher, and this will be our sh new short run equilibrium. So what have we learned in this module? Well, we've seen that we can use the aggregate demand and aggregate supply model to explain what happens in the long run, long run economic growth, as well as why we have short run economic fluctuations in the economy. It explains what kind of shocks will affect the economy in terms of what changes we can expect in the price level, as well as what kind of changes we can expect in the level of production or output. Thanks so much for joining me in module 3.3 on the ADAS model.